And the, um, as, as luck would have it, the charges that are moving are negative charges in wires because the electrons are free. That's bad luck because we, we define the, the direction of current as the way the positive charges are moving. So when the electric, when the char let's see how this picture shows. Um, the, the electrons are drifting to the right, uh, but the current would be going to the left because it's, 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 it's the way the positive charges would move. Okay, so that's just one of the inconveniences we have to live with. It's just a thing with Benjamin Franklin decided, guess on what type of charge was coming out of a certain experiment, and he, he picked positive for the something and negative for the other, and we're stuck with it somehow 200 years later. Um, anyhow, the current is like a flow of water into a pipe, and if you have a fork in the pipe, the total amount coming out must equal total coming in. That's just conservation of charge. Uh, I have an example here. You can work it out. I did in the notes. I work out if you have, for example, um, all of these currents that are given, like 2 amps here and 3 amps here. You get 5 amps coming out here. Uh, well, okay, we're stuck. We don't know. Here, you have 4 amps. Well, let's see. Uh, one amp coming out of here, two amps going over here. Must be three amps going over here, right? Because three amps split here, and we have five going in and three going out. There must be two going this way, four going this way, two going that way. There must be six going this way, two going this way. With density six, must be four coming out. Did, did I get that wrong? Eight. Okay, that's how you do it. <laughs> you play that game. You just gotta follow and see who's going where. Uh, what did I get that wrong? Three here. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, you do it at home. <laughs> uh, but they should add up, right? And, and that'll tell you how much is coming out of here, just by um, seeing who goes where. <laughs> this one. Um, the next one is uh, the cause of the flow. This is very important. Something. There has to be a pressure difference, a voltage difference creating an electric field. As we said, if you have a voltage difference, there's an electric field, electric field push the free the movable charges. And the analogy in water is a pressure difference. If you want water to flow, you have a tank up here, and spigot down here, you have a pressure difference between top and bottom. If they're on the same level, two reservoirs like this, there would be no flow. Instead of the same potential. But if you have something like this, you can get a flow. That's pretty obvious. And then I uh, mentioned a few things. Um, sources, well, we have battery, dry cells, the wet cells, power company. And then I forgot a very important one interesting to you guys in biology, the ion pumps in cell membranes. They create a voltage difference. How they do it beats me, but you, you probably understand it. But <laughs> uh, somehow they can pump the ions against the gradient. You know, let's say this uh, sodium and potassium, uh, they're somehow able to grab, uh, say, um, potassium in this bath, which is a maybe low concentration, and pump them up here and against the, the, the fusion. There are proteins that can do that, apparently. We're using energy. It takes energy to do that. All of, these, all of these things require a certain amount of energy or stored energy. Like a dry cell, basically, I think of it that, uh, let's say you have sodium and chlorine. Sodium wants to give up an electron. Chlorine wants to take an electron. So if you put sodium here and chlorine here and attach them to the wire, sodium is going to want to give up its electron. It's going to run to the chlorine. And in so doing, you let it do some work. Because it wants to go, all right, you pay the price. You'll have to run through a filament of a lamp, or you have to run through my computer or something, and do some work, and then you can go to the chlorine. So that's it's a chemical thing in these batteries. They just have a preference. The electrons do. It comes out of quantum mechanics. That's where the energy levels are where these guys end up. And then if you attach two of them, they want to run from one to the other. So you, and in the case of the electric power company, you put some work in, as we will later in the course. You put some work in, and you can raise electrons to a higher potential and force. And then they want to go to the lower potential, and you again have them do some work like the lights. So there are a whole bunch of ways of getting this electrical pressure. And as we said, we're now going to be dealing with pushing electrons not through a vacuum. I'm not going to be dropping that ball uh, through empty space, but I'm going to have it go through a material and wiggle its way across a material, and that produces resistance the opposition to flow. And the nearest analogy I think of, and you maybe think of another, is the clogging of a pipe, or the size of a pipe. If you have a big pipe, it doesn't resist the flow. If you have a little pipe, it's harder to get water through it. Uh, also the length of the pipe. If you have a long, long pipe, it's a little harder to get through than a short pipe. Also it depends how clogged the pipe is. If it's got stuff in it, um, in a sense it reduces the area, and uh, the resistance goes up. So for the same pressure, the flow will be slower. Have you ever had a clogged sink? That's, that's what it is. You have a pipe, but you clog it and try to get water through. The pressure is the same. The water wants to go down the drain, but if there's little stuff in there, um, the clogginess reduces the flow until it gets really clogged and you get nothing. Uh, anyhow, we did this little demo uh, in, in indicating the clogginess. If I put even more little nails there, it would be even more clogged, or if I put them a little further apart, it would go a little faster. So that's the resistance. You can adjust it by various means we'll talk about. I'm not going to talk, oh, by the way, let's skip the section in the book about conduction mechanisms. You can read it, but I'm not going to worry about it now. We're going to get to it when we talk about solids later on. So this is maybe a good thing to mention here. Um, whatever that section is uh, on conduction mechanisms. It talks about semiconductors and superconductors and all kinds of things. Let's not bother with that now. Um, it'll make much more sense later on, unless you know something about those things. So we have this um, idea of resistance, and it's measured in the unit of ohms. That is, the resistance, if I put on a certain amount of pressure, voltage, and I get a certain amount of current. If the current is small, then the resistance is high. So the usual way to think about this is the voltage is producing pressure, for example. Uh, and that is pretty much a constant. And what happens is what you do is the voltage is, is, is given usually. I can, there may be some exceptions, but typically, for example, coming out of the wall is 120 volts nominally. Something we call that, and, and that stays constant regardless of what you what you plug in, or if you have a battery, simple battery that is one and a half volts. That's it. So depending on what you connect to it, that will determine how much flow goes through it. So these are kind of the constant part. See, in a lot of these questions, you have to know what's constant and what's varying. Typically, with uh, electricity, what's constant is the pressure you put on that the, that the power company gives you or that the battery gives you. Um, yeah. So that's that's what you have to uh, appreciate. Um, so you adjust the, the current adjusts, the current adjusts to the resistance. So it really, it's, this defines resistance. But really, what, you, what you're really doing is you have V over R. This is more realistic way of looking at it. You apply a certain amount of voltage, which is pressure difference, and the, the more the resistance is, the less current you'll get. That makes sense, no? Okay. So and that is exactly Ohm's law. Uh, the Ohm's law applies when that uh, re um, resistance doesn't depend on the current. In other words, if, if you, um, for example, you could raise the voltage. 
there are conditions where if you raise the voltage, but if the ratio of the voltage to, to the re, um, resistance, if the current goes, in other words, if you raise, the, if you are able to raise the voltage, which is possible to do, you may be able to do that in the lab, like double the voltage. If you double the voltage and you double the current, then and then the resistance is a constant. That's called an ohmic material. But that law is always true. That is that the, you can always define a resistance. If the resistance is independent of the current and voltage, then we say that material is ohmic. And there are some uh, important cases where the resistance actually will change with the uh, with the voltage and current that you apply. The voltage you apply. Now we get into the kind of fun thing that you're going to be doing in the lab. Um, wherein you put in combinations of resistors. And that's this uh, demo here. Um, no, let's see, what do I do? Why, I don't know why they put close. Let me turn on. Let's see. Uh, okay, now, <coughs> let's see why. Should be seeing some. Oh, okay. Why? Oh, okay, okay, I see what's going on. Okay, yes, okay, so what is, it, what is this circuit? Um, here's a battery, and uh, it is providing voltage in here. Um, so there's a potential difference between, because of the battery, between these two points, meaning that negative charges want to go out of this thing, and they want to go around the circuit and come back through here. So um, now I close the circuit. I put the battery in by closing the switch here, and you will see that current, hopefully, sheesh, what's going on here? Didn't I just see current? Um, this is hairier than I need. Huh. This should give me. What's going on here? <laughs> very strange. Very strange. Oh, uh, let's see. Why? This should be working. Let's see. The idea is that if this is a live battery, which it may have pooped already, um, oh, it's been on all the time we were talking, which was kind of foolish. The point being, okay, let's just go through it in imaginary terms. Um, what, what I'm trying to do here, here I'm, I'm trying to measure the, the flow of current through here. Now what I have here is uh, an ammeter. An ammeter, am is for amperes, it's a me measure of current. To measure the current, you have to put the ammeter in the line of the circuit because what you're trying to do is measure current, which is like water in a pipe, I have to put the meter right in the line of the pipe. So that's what this thing is supposed to be doing. But then the electrons coming out of here, see the current is going the other way, nominally, if this full battery was working. Uh, I don't know why it's not, unless it's that, oh. I think maybe the battery's dead because we were watching, um, were, uh, it was on the whole time while that I was talking. Uh, in any case, the current will go through here. It will flow through this resistor. By the way, these resistors look like, oh, this is just a wire right now. Okay, this is just a wire. Oh, that's indicated by this. Um, and I have other choices of resistors which look like this. Uh, in principle, let me, let me call um, Let me call James and see if we can find out what happened here. Excuse me a second. James, hello? Uh, I think the battery's dead. Because we left it, I think we left it on the whole time. See if you can, okay, sorry. Okay, so the point, what I'm going to try to talk about is, see, there was a wire here, and this would allow current to flow very nicely. If I put this 3,000 ohm thing in here, it represents somewhat of a clogged pipe, so what we would have seen is the electric current decrease, because if this battery had any life in it, it's putting out a certain amount of pressure. I, when I close this, I got nothing by way of current. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's uh, Did you need that? I don't think you need it. Well, it's, oh, there's a fashion problem. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. that works. Okay, yeah. why, why don't we have all those? Uh, well, that's putting two batteries in series with each other, and this okay. is going out of these, the switch, oh, okay. this is going into the circuit. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I didn't notice that. Okay. Yeah, Great. Okay. So let's, let's do that. Um, th that's the current. So let me take this out. What'll happen when I take it out? I open the circuit. The current can't get through. That should do what? Go to zero. Okay. Okay. Now I put in this wire. I still have some resistance in the circuit. I wouldn't want to do that. This with a wire, it's a very much easier path. I get a lot more current. Now, um, the, uh, this meter here is a voltmeter. It's measuring the pressure drop across things. Um, so when it's, uh, for example, this is the battery. In principle, I should be measuring the voltage of that battery, 12 volts. Or I could measure the voltage. Now, there's nothing else in the circuit but this resistor. So if I measure this one, what do you think I should measure? Same. Because all the, all the voltage that came out of this is used up in this resistor. There's nothing else. OK? Um, yes. OK, so now, again, we do this trick. I put this back. We open it up. We put this in here. I added, I added some resistance in, seri in, this quote, in series. So now the, the, the flow has to go through two clogged pipes. Makes things worse. Less current will flow. And indeed, it does. Now, suppose, for example, I. Um, add another resistor, but I put it here. What will happen? What do you think is going to happen to the current? Up, down, sideways. <laughs> how many say up? All right. How many say down? Aha. Okay. It's not even even choice. Okay. Let's try. Okay. We put it in. Now we're starting at about three and a half. Went to eight. Okay. okay. Well, this is a little tricky because I put this one in in parallel. Think, think of the thing. Here I am. I'm water. I'm coming into this. I got one clogged pipe. I had another clogged pipe. They offer me another path, so more can flow because we can go through here. So you, when you put things in parallel, it's easier to go. But one analogy is like somebody's leaving the room. If you have if you have um, two doors. 
you, you can get out more easily than one. You have two doors in parallel. On the other hand, if you're in a corridor and there's a door and a door and a door, it's hard to get through. So things in series impede you. Things in parallel uh, uh, make it easier. Let me show you one other fun thing. Let me open this up. I, we, I don't have any time, but um, I wasted it with that um, thing. I wanted to show you while we're here, if you have a spare minute. Um, I was going to go through a whole thing on how your house is wired. Your house is wired sort of like this uh, um, power strip. You, you see the, the one wire white going like this, and then there's a black wire going this way. When you plug things in, you plug them in across the, across the wires, and you put them in parallel. In other words, there's a reason for that, and we'll go into it maybe next time. Because the power company gives you 120 volts. If you keep your appliances all in parallel, let's say your TV, your washing machine, your radio, if you put them in parallel, they all see 120 volts. And so that's what the power strip is doing for you. You're putting your washing machine, your TV, your radio across these lines, and, and then they build these machines to take 120 volts. And it's the same because this is an equal potential, this, 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 like that. Now, what you have to be careful, though, is that if you put on too many appliances, the wiring may not be strong enough to, hold, to carry all that thing. So you have to put in a fuse. So here's, here's the fuse. This one will work, or, I, or bad things will happen to me. Um, <laughs> this, this is the amount of current. So suppose what this is, it's a simple circuit, uh, basically this. Uh, I have the voltage plus to minus going through a lamp, through a fuse. So I go something like this, through a lamp, and then I go through a fuse. This is that piece of wire here. Now the point of the fuse is that if the current gets too high, you want this to open up. And what could happen, for example, if, if somebody connects these two wires together with, a, with another with a wire, because this represents a resistance. If you put a, uh, just a wire across here, you have no resistance, and the current can go very, very high, and it can, it can catch uh, the house on fire. So what you have is a fuse or a circuit breaker in, the, in your house, and the many power supplies too. So basically what I'm going to do to simulate that, I'm gonna uh, put light to light, but then I'm gonna pretend I short the bulb so that I give a path through here. The current then can run through there and, and it dims the light because there's no, the current would much rather go through a, this shorting wire than go through the lamp. So the lamp will get dim, the current will go crazy because it, it can get through this shorted circuit. This is known as a short circuit, it's a bad thing to happen. Uh, and the light will get dim, the current will get very high, so high that I, hopefully this will burn up because you want it to, you want to open the circuit because you, you don't want this to continue too long because you, you want to stop this process of getting too hot. So let's try it. So here's a lamp, nicely, and the current is decent. It's like, um, it's on a five amp scale. Uh, one, it's about a third of an amp. Okay, now I'm gonna short this out against advice from higher management. Okay, now the current goes crazy. So look, watch this guy. Yeah, that's the fuse blowing. Because you want, you, you see, and the current goes to zero, which you want, because you don't want, you don't want that current flowing through the wires in your house. You got it? Let's do it again. <laughs> okay, those who want to stay, I can do it again. 